welcome to class for today trust you are enjoying and learning from this series of generator repairs if you subscribe to this channel if you haven't please do well to subscribe like share with friends and family give us feedback via the comment section also click on the notification bell so you are in the know when new videos are uploaded so on this channel today we will we'll be restoring power outputs through this sandwich generator we understand from the information given to us by our clients that uh, this generator was previously in use it was working and suddenly voltage just went off and at such we'll be doing the needful as regards it we'll be looking critically to what could be the cause and why the generator refused to bring out power now what are the likeliest faults that may have resulted to this problem one of it could be as a result of bridge of wire another could be as a result of discontinuous wire very possible faults can originate from the alternator as well this is the alternator this whole part of the this whole part is the alternator and the alternator consists of the starter and the rotor some people call the starter the feed windings which is very correct as well and the rotor the amateur windings so faults can also exist from those uh, part as well another place where the fault can come out is this circuit breaker sometimes for some generators when it carries load that is far more than what the generator should be able to carry this breaker shoots out what it does at that point it it disconnects from the inside and at source current voltage power cannot come out from this circuit that is what it does another could be as a result of bad capacitor when the capacitor is bad when it's very bad when it's faulty there is no way on earth the generator can produce voltage so let's examine physically what could be the fault of the generator if you observe carefully i'm going to be doing this in the simplest of methods i don't have a multimeter with me here and there's a reason for that i don't want a situation where there's power outage there's power failure and you go around looking for a multimeter where you can use other simpler means to rectify the fault and bring your gen back to life so on this note, let me look at this physically and diagonize it and tell you where the fault is most likely to come from or where exactly it is uh, coming from. Let me put the gen on so at least you notice something here. What I'm about to do, I'm going to put on the gen so you notice the voltmeter and see if the voltmeter reads. If it reads, what that means is there is power. Are you getting me? Take for example, I put on the generator and it reads. What happens now? I will explain this critically. What happens here is that the generator itself has power. And then it's just brought down, the fault just brought down to this socket and its connection. Are you getting me? It has power. The generator itself has power. Nothing is wrong with the gen. I mean, from the alternator and what have you, nothing is wrong with it but this socket has power well if per adventure i put on this generator right now and this voltage this voltmeter doesn't move at all that shows it is beyond this connection are you getting me it has maybe the capacitor from the alternator let's do this first then if this is not the fault we go straight to the capacitor and see if the capacitor is the one at fault 
if perhaps we have shared the capacitor and it's still not at fault, then we we'll go straight to the alternator. So shall we? Okay, what we just done, we just successfully diagonize that the generator itself has to be critically looked at. I will just diagonize that this socket is not the fault. Okay, if there was movement here, we would have said okay. Perhaps voltage is power gets to this point. But it doesn't get to this point. Probably there's a little bit of discontinuity. One or two wires may have lost contact to the point where you have to tighten it to the socket itself or something else. But what this shows us, what this has just shown us now is that there is no voltage coming out to this panel at all. Okay, so let's look into the generator and detect for ourselves and these teachings regularly on this channel you will remember i've said this several times when you lose a boat try your possible best to keep them together so when you are trying to we are trying to couple <laughs> you won't start looking for them because it's so so bad if you're trying to couple and you start looking for boats it doesn't bode well at all okay this is the Taking the tank out. Let me take this off as well. Reason I'm doing this, I still want to check if there's any form of discontinuity inside of this. I know there will not be any discontinuity since. Okay, and there is no discontinuity. It looks very, very clean and sharp. That said, next point of contact is the capacitor. That's the capacitor, this white round uh, component is the capacitor. Basically, what the capacitor does is to store charges mm, for the engineering fellows, for the technical minds. You should know that. But if you are not that technical, there is no need to know it. Your own concern should be let my generator come on. Let my let my generator be able to power my house. Okay, this is the capacitor. Now we have a capacitor here, and we are going to put the capacitor to see if the generator with the change of this capacitor is going to bring voltage. We have a new capacitor here. 25 microfarad is what is usually called. But for people in this part of the world, if you go get it from a shop, they will tell you 25 US. And that's not bad as well because they see it as you, but we see it as micro. All right. That said, we have four points here. You can fix it any way you want, but I like fixing it at alternate points. Okay, I've succeeded in fixing a new capacitor. Because this capacitor looks dead. You know, we are physically examining it. We are not using any uh, instrument to examine it. We need to do it physically, just in case. It happens and you don't have any tools or any major measuring or testing equipment with you. You can just physically examine it. Physically examine it now. It looks bad. Alright, let's go. Alright. If you look carefully now. You see this bulge here? You see this movement? Okay. All right. 
that is it. We have successfully changed the capacitor of this generator from a very dead capacitor into a new one. So what this shows you now is, I didn't want to sit at the middle of the class, so you at least get the point before I see it. What this shows you now is, when a generator goes off, I mean when the power of a generator goes off, most times, 95% of the time, what is majorly at fault is the capacitor. For a generator like this, it's usually the capacitor. So it is advisable you change the capacitor. Are you getting me? Sometimes I do advise people, for those that use generators a lot of the time, the capacitor should be changed at least for four months. For those that use generator a lot, and sometimes three months, if you have the means, just change the capacitor after usage for three months. Change it and see that there is no point in time where it's going to, to disappoint you. That said, we successfully changed this capacitor. In fact, we successfully resolved and rectified the fault of this generator. So let's couple it back and so we deliver it to our clients. This is it. We successfully fixed the tank. Let me restart. As it's now working very, very fine. So that is it from today's class. See, we successfully fixed a capacitor.